Hallelujah. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Can you put your hands together this morning to the Lord and give a cup of praise to the Lord of Christ? This is the house of the living God. Hallelujah. And when we come here, nobody is important. The only person who is important is Jesus. And what the Holy Spirit does in his vessels, because the Holy Spirit has come to glorify Jesus. So anything I want to do to glorify Jesus, the Holy Spirit will work through me. Hallelujah. Amen. And I also want you to know that this is a prophetic ministry with a prophetic gathering. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's a prophetic grace. And so when we come, let's make room, let's make provision for the Spirit of the Lord to minister to us. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who it looks strange, what does have what we call the spirit of prophecy? When the Holy Spirit speaks by inspiration, it makes you feel like Satan never use the word feel for lack of a better word. I inspire you. There are no words that you planned or thought of before you came to church, or maybe you can know before, but there are words that just the Holy Spirit drops into a, your spirit, and then you speak with your mouth because I am the vessel that God is going to use. Amen. He's not going to speak through this wall. Amen. Hello? Amen. How many of you know if God began to speak through this wall? There will be only one person remaining here, the pastor. And <laughs> should be on your knees in praying and binding. Then God decided to speak through these walls. So he speaks to things that we can identify with. He spoke to a donkey because there was nobody there. It was just one man and the donkey. So he spoke to the donkey. If there was a prophet there, God would have spoken to the prophet. Amen. Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. So we are in the house of the Lord and God wants to speak. And, and, and we are in business here. Hello? Amen. We are in business. Bible says that one time they built a temple unto the Lord. And the young men were so excited seeing the temple built, and the old men began to cry because they looked at Solomon's temple that was built in glory and honor and dignity with precious stones. And when they look at the new temple that had been built, it, it was nothing in comparison to the old temple. So while the young men were weeping and excited and shouting, the old men were weeping, they couldn't even tell the difference. Then the prophet said, When you look at this new temple, Compared to the old temple, it builds in insignificance compared to the to the to the old temple. Yet in this place I will grant my peace, and the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former. It is not about size; it is about people going on their knees, calling upon God to move in their midst. And God already, Hallelujah. Oh, can I hear an amen? That is why we are here. You may not understand everything right now, but you understand with time. But I also went into a charismatic church for the first time. I didn't understand. And you are very fortunate. Me, I was introduced to a charismatic system through online prayer meetings. So you go and then we start praying from 10 30 p.m. after praise and worship. We pray till 4 30, no stop. After 4 30, before there'll be exhortation. And then we close around 6 or 7 a.m. And here I was. I didn't know anything about that. I was looking at people speaking in tongues. And they said, Don't look at people, don't look at people, keep praying. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are fortunate. Amen. If you can't understand, you will understand the truth. Amen. Is that okay? Yes. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. I said, is that okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I want to continue what we started last week. Father, I pray that you speak to us and minister to us through your holy word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I've been instructed to speak for a short time, so I'll try. Praise the Lord. Amen. I remember that it was the year uh, 1976 when a, a group of people in my high school decided to come together to pray for a revival in the school, for a move of God in the school. And we, we prayed from 1976. And in 1977, on my own birthday, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then I came, after I passed my first level exams, what we call junior high school or old level exams, and I came to what we call sixth form because secondary school in my country at that time was seven years. And so after five years, you come to sixth form for another two years before you go to university. And I remember I came to sixth form, and this brother that was leading us was uh, in form five at that time. And we kept praying, praying for revival in the school. And my expectation was that they will pass their exams and then they will come and then we together will continue to pray. Unfortunately, all the people in that prayer team who wrote their own level exams failed because we didn't study, we prayed. Whatever you saw, you read. So I found myself getting to sixth form 
all alone at the war front of that revival that was begun, that prayer time that was begun. And I remember I wrote three things that I put under my trunk. That we didn't have suitcases to take to school. And we take something called a metal suitcase. We call it trunk. Mm -hmm. And a wooden box we call chop box. The last time I saw a chop box was in a church in, in, in Love of Jesus in, 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 in New Jersey. And the guy was so excited. He said, we went to Africa and we brought this box. It was a wooden box. He was so excited about the wooden box he brought from Africa. That's what we used to put food in to go to school. <laughs> And I wrote three things I wanted God to do. I see it. I got your message. So I put that piece of paper in my trunk. I don't remember everything I wrote, but I wrote that I want to see a move of God. I want to see the scripture you know, move from worldliness to holiness and righteousness. And then I also wanted to see the whole school on fire or something. But I wrote three main things. And I'll get up in the morning and I will go on my knees and pray and have my bath and put on my school uniform and refuse to go to classes and I'll be praying and praying and, and I kept praying. And then they'll ring the bell for breakfast at nine o'clock and when everybody went for breakfast, I will still be fasting and praying. I fasted almost every day, Monday to Friday, Monday to Sunday. Sometimes I fasted Tuesday to Sunday. It's, it is rare for you to see me at breakfast on, 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 on Tuesday. The worst that happened to me those days was I went to breakfast on Tuesday, but by Wednesday I started fasting, and I, and I kept fasting and praying, seeking the Lord, wanting to move for God. We experienced so many things. I saw people cry in the classrooms without anybody talking to them about Christ, giving their lives to the Lord Jesus when I was in school. Amen. If that is not revival, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I saw pictures, students crying, accepting the Lord. I saw people getting filled with the Holy Ghost and mass. We saw the Holy Ghost come down during praise and worship. Nobody was laying hands on anybody. People getting filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, prophesying. Students. I was 19 then. I was not even 20 years old. So I'm talking about people who are 11, 12, 13, 14. God use them. And since we are talking about prayer now, I feel like sharing this with you to inspire you because I've come to accept and I've convinced myself and it is the truth that there is no situation no matter how black it is that cannot be changed when a man zealously goes down upon his knees and says God this is between you and I only you can change the situation Amen. that God will not change Amen. and I have a lot of very interesting experiences interesting testimonies of the move of God in my high school. Because we gave ourselves to prayer. And I remember these ladies, four ladies, called my friends, and we have been friends up to now. We are going through all kinds of battles, but we gave ourselves to prayer. And we prayed from lunch, we didn't go for lunch. After about lunch, when everybody goes to school, when school has siesta or sleeping time, we will pray from about 2.30 to about 5.30. For the move of God. And God moved. Amen. Because God will always move in response and answer to prayer. Yes, He will. God will always, always move. We'll get into the word. Share a few things with you. Everybody here knows about Martin Luther. Anybody heard about Martin Luther? No, Martin Luther, King Jr. Martin Luther, the original one. The one who brought about. The, the, the general about the the, 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 the the reformation or the opposition to the Catholic system. That salvation is by faith and by grace, or justification is by grace and faith and not by law. You don't have to pay penance mm -hmm. to receive grace from the Lord. You don't have to pray to a priest to be forgiven your sins. I am a priest and I have access to the throne room of God mm -hmm. to ask God for his mercy. I don't need a father confessor. And to go and recite Hail Mary three times and Rose Christ 17 times. And do something before I'm forgiven. He led that revolution. This is what he said. He said, I have so much to do that today that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. He said, I have so much to do today that I will spend the first three hours in prayer to God. I know when I have so much to do, I said, God, wait, when I finish, I'll come and pray. He said, I have so much to do today. There is a call on this house for prayer. Prayer that will affect the destiny of this land, 
Prayer that will affect the destiny of your family. Prayer that will affect the destiny of your children yet to be born, your marriage in the future. Prayer that will change situations. Prayer that will bring the glory of the Lord down upon this church, upon this ministry. And there are personal benefits for those prayers. Amen. Because the farmer will get the first fruit. Amen. So you might be praying for revival for Mount Vernon, but your Rolls Royce is in that prayer. Quote number two. Queen of Scotland. Some of you have heard this quotation before. There was a man of prayer whose name was John Knox. Great man of prayer. This is what John Knox said. This is what the Queen of Scotland, Mary, Queen of Scotland. This is what she said about John Knox. He said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than the combined armies of Europe. He said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than the combined armies of Europe. In my country, one time there was a revolution. The whole world was excited about the revolution, and I thank God for the revolution. But a lot of terrible things were happening in my country. And we gave ourselves to prayer. And I remember one time we went to the beach to pray late night. We prayed, and, and they had the security system where they can be walking on the coast uh, and the uh, high seas and they're only under in front green or contra rail, whatever lights. So when they shoot that light, you can't see them and they can see you. So they saw this, saw us moving up and down on the coast plain, and they were so much afraid of Kujita that any small guy was a threat to the government. So they gave a signal. So by the time we finished prayer, just as we we're about to get into our car to go home, we were surrounded by the police and they pulled their guns and I'm talking about pistols, I'm talking about AK 47s. So what are you doing here? So we came to pray. They said, if you came to pray, why are your candles? And he said, we said, we don't use candles. He said, to pray. we pray to the Lord. Fortunately, the pastor whose car we used, he had a Bible in the car. We brought the Bible. So he said, what's the problem? He said, yes, because we met somebody praying. And we asked him, what are you praying about? He said, I'm praying for the government to be removed. If you get what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. So my mouth began. Mm -hmm. If I pray for the government to be removed, what are you afraid of? You don't believe in my God. Because every government... Every authority, everybody knows what prayer can do. Fortunately or fortunately, and I'm not judging because I'm also in America and a minister in America, but statistics show that the average American preacher spends less than five minutes in prayer to God. Yes. And since the light begets the light, we are raising generations of prayerless pastors in the pulpit mm -hmm. and who are prospering and succeeding. Mm -hmm. So the emphasis on prayer is not being stressed yes. because. Prayer or no prayer, they are still succeeding. They are on TV. And even they are doing better than those who are praying. Mm. So why should they pray? Mm. Mm. But statistics have also shown. They compare the converse of two evangelists. I don't want to uh, mention the name for comparison purposes. One was a prayer evangelist. One was a, an oratorial evangelist. And they said that it was recorded that over a greater percentage of the prayer evangelists his converts stayed more than this one. So they got saved, but they went back into the world. But they prayed evangelist. Because anytime you pray, and you pray for souls to be saved, and you speak over a place, you deal with the spirits and the forces and the authorities that control and influence the people and the place. And you pray the yoke. So when the people are converted, the things that will find them and take them back into the world have been dealt with. Amen. Amen. So I came to call you to pray. And say, I, I, I am young. I don't know how to pray. And I don't know how to pray. I am not asking you to know how to pray. I'm asking you to pray. Make time for it. Amen. Because I know God answers prayer. Amen. And I thank God for the first song that was sung. Can you read the volume? The first song. He said, What? What are the first song we sang here? Huh? Oh, what's the name? Sing for joy. Huh? Sing for joy. Sing for joy. What was the first time? When you call on me, I will answer you. And then one I said, what? If you lift your hands, I will lift you up. Yes. Sing for joy. He so said, when you call on me, I will answer you. So we don't come here to sing songs that we don't mean. Or we sing so that we understand but we don't appreciate. Because the truth of the matter is that God will answer any prayer that is prayed according to his will. Amen. 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 Are you with me, church? Yes, amen. And it doesn't matter who is praying. 
Because when Peter went to the house of Cornelius, a Gentile who doesn't know Jesus, who has no relationship with Jesus, but God has sent an angel to visit him. When there were other Christians who had never seen an angel before, when Peter got to the house of Cornelius, Peter said, now I know of the truth that God is no respecter of persons, but anyone who genuinely calls upon God. Yes, yes, amen. Amen. So it is not a pastor mm -mm. or the pastor's wife or the pastor's husband or the evangelist per se. It is anyone, anyone. who is willing to pray. Amen. God is willing to honor your prayer. Amen. I'm not here to give a definition of prayer. Everybody here knows to pray, how to pray. And not just for the prayer conference, all about definitions of prayer. It's about inspiring people to pray. That's all. Are you with me? Amen. Yes. So if you know how to talk, you know how to pray. Yes. When we're in Ghana, we used to have fun with this statement. This American guy prays. Oh God, I want to wrap to you because when I wrap to you, I feel good. So wrap to the Lord. Wrap. Whether your language is broken English or pidgin English or Spanish or French, whatever language you can speak, tell God. I want to see your glory upon the church. Yes. I want to see souls saved. Yes. I want to see my life change. I want to see my family change. I want to see the situation change. When we pray, God will move. Second story. I just finished this form and, and I came home. The founder of the church that was attending at that time, I just began to was about a year old. And the pastor traveled to the U.S. for six months for a Mauricio School of Ministry. And when I got home, one of the leaders in the ministry called me and said, everything is so bad because the pastor who was taking over was coming to church around 8 p.m. when church started at 